Hello, Baden Believers. I'm really excited to share another week of art with you. So last week when we learned about the Impressionists, you might have been wondering, where's Van Gogh? Here's the thing. Van Gogh usually gets put into a different group of artists called the Post-Impressionists. Now in this case, post does not mean like a post on Google Classrooms. Post means after. So there's the Impressionists and then the After Impressionists, the Post-Impressionists. The post-impressionists were artists that saw what the impressionists were doing and thought it was really cool but decided to put their own spin on it. The post-impressionists were inspired by how the impressionists painted outside, painted everyday things, and used their paint and their brush strokes very freely and expressively, but the post-impressionists were a little bit more interested in form. We talked about form when we did our Wayne Thiebaud art. Form is showing that an object is three-dimensional, showing that an object takes up space. So the post-impressionists were a little bit more interested in form. Their art is less shimmery looking and more solid. While the impressionists were interested in really recreating exactly what they saw, exactly the way the light and the atmosphere looked, the post-impressionists sometimes used some crazy colors. You also might be thinking, does Miss A not have an outfit that matches this theme? You know I do. So let's get started looking at some ways we can make art inspired by the post-impressionists and learn a little bit more about the artists that are most well known. Van Gogh painted a lot of everyday objects and scenes, including his bedroom and his chair. You can make your own Van Gogh inspired room with 3D details using just whatever you have around the house. I used a piece of printer paper and I glued it to a piece of construction paper to make it a little bit more sturdy. Then I folded it so that I had a wall and a floor and so that it would stand up by itself. It might take a couple tries to get it to stand up. Then you can start decorating your floor and your wall and adding 3D and collage details. This is kind of like the Monet Pond project because it can really work with whatever you have at home. If you have a shoe box, that can make a great room. And I'm going to try making a 3D chair out of folded paper. I made mine look like Van Gogh's chair, but you could make it look like any chair you want. It's your room. Then I folded the chair and glued it to the wall of my room so that it would stand up like a three-dimensional object. Personalizing your room is really fun and the possibilities are endless. I made a carpet out of wrapping paper. I made a vase of flowers using a grocery store coupon. And I made a shelf filled with art supplies and books. Here's my Van Gogh room with a 3D chair. Van Gogh layered his paint so thickly that you can still see his brush strokes. This technique is called impasto and it's when the paint stands out from the canvas and creates a texture. When you look closely at a Van Gogh, you can imagine what it would feel like to touch it. Now, when I hear texture, I think of shaving cream paint. So, I drew a vase of sunflowers because Van Gogh loved to paint sunflowers. And then I mixed up shaving cream, glue, and paint to add a little bit of texture to my drawing. You can also make this paint with just shaving cream and food coloring or just shaving cream and paint. I think it stays puffier when you add less paint and mix it less. Your puffy paint doesn't have to stay super puffy to show your brush strokes though. I really like how now my drawing has a texture that I can feel with my fingers. In a lot of Van Gogh's paintings, there are swirly lines that give us a sense of movement or a sense of it being windy outside. We can get a similar effect using a fork. First, I drew a landscape. Then, I painted over just one portion of my landscape at a time. This is because if your paint dries, scraping the fork through it will not make any lines. But if your paint is wet, you can scrape a fork through and make a bunch of lines in a row. You have to be speedy to draw those lines with the fork before the paint dries. But in the end, you have a beautiful painting of a windy day. If you want a similar effect without the fork, you can draw while holding more than one crayon at a time. This also gives you repeated lines and gives you that same sense of movement. You can try this with crayon, oil pastels, markers, colored pencils, and you can also paint on top with watercolors. The artist Georges Seurat developed a style called pointillism. Pointillist paintings are made out of dots. From far away they blend together, but close up you can see that they are all separate dots, made with the point of a brush. You can make dots using any art tool, but one of the fastest ways to make them is with paint. I stamped my dots using paint and Q-tips. This still takes a long time though, so be prepared to take some breaks. I experimented with pointillist color mixing. If I put blue dots really close to yellow dots, will it look like green from far away? What if I put red, blue, and yellow dots close together? Making art out of dots takes a long time, but it's super cool to look at it from far away when you're done. 
Another fast and fun way to make dots is stamping using Legos. The circles on top of a Lego make a great stamp. You can dip it in paint or you can paint the paint onto it with a brush. I recommend washing the paint off the Legos as soon as you're done because the paint is easiest to wash off while it's wet. You can have fun experimenting with different sizes and shapes of Legos. Bubble wrap makes good dot prints too. A still life is a painting of objects, usually everyday objects like fruit and vases that have been arranged in a beautiful way. The artist Paul Cezanne is known as the father of the post-impressionist movement and he is famous for his paintings of apples. You can create your own still life by setting up a collection of objects that you find beautiful. I placed my objects on top of a scarf because drawing the folds in the fabric can be really fun and really good practice. And then I set up some flowers and a bowl that I made in my ceramics class. And of course, an orange and some apples. I sketched my objects with pencil and then outlined them with crayon. When I color them in to give them a sense of form, I'm doing the same thing I did to my Wayne Tebow cupcakes. I'm deciding where the sunlight is coming from, and on that side, I'm putting lighter colors or a white highlight, and then on the side away from the sun, I'm putting dark shadows. In these two paintings by Paul Signac, we can see how sometimes the post-impressionists used colors that were so bright that they probably didn't really look that way in nature, but they are super beautiful. I tried to draw a landscape using as many bright colors as possible, with blue shadows, purple shadows. I used a lot of pink and orange too. These really bright colors remind me of a warm sunny day. Thank you for watching! I'm so excited to see what art you guys will make, and I hope you guys have fun exploring different ideas.